spoken for itself. Just a short little lesson quickly on the measurement of tourism. Obviously, I did say in the previous lesson that um, tourism is seen as an economic activity that contributes to the GDP, but we would obviously need to be able to calculate uh, how much, in monetary terms, what is the contribution to the GDP. We would want to know about job creation in the tourist industry. So it's important for us to be able to measure the contribution of tourism to the economy. All right. And um, although I did say in the previous lesson that for us to measure foreign tourism is easier because they, the, the foreign tourist has to come through customs when they enter the country and they go through customs when they leave the country. So it's easy for us to obtain information about these foreign tourists. But when we measure tourism, it's not literally just about counting the number of tourists that is coming into the country in a given period of time. It is one of the things that we want to know. Yes, now we want to know how many tourists are visiting our country. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? So it's one of the things that we need. But that is not going to give us an idea in monetary terms. Now how much those tourists are spending, for example. Right. So when we are wanting to find information um, on whether the, the tourist industry is growing or not, we are also going to look at things like the number of arrivals. Yeah, that's the one that I explained as they come through the border. We literally count yeah, how many foreign tourists are coming into our country. That's the number of arrivals. We use an indicator called overnight stays. All right. So we, remember I said for something to be classified as tourism, it has to involve at least one night's worth of accommodation. You have to stay for at least one night. So the amount of overnight stays, now we, so we count literally how many people stayed in the hotel, now how many nights was hotel beds booked, for example, to, to see if it's increasing or decreasing. Other indicators that we are using, okay, to measure the volume of domestic travel, okay, we literally look at the incidence of domestic travel, how many trips do your average household take, now, and this information they can get from a census. They can get from Statistics South Africa. All right. So how many people, how many trips did a household take over the period of a year? All right. We want to know, for example, the amount spent by domestic tourists. Now, what is the value of the spending? How much money do they spend on accommodation and transport and toll gates and food? Now, when you're away on holiday, the food that they eat. Now, how much money are they spending? Because that we can use then to calculate the contribution to the GDP. We look at the number of bed nights. Now, that's how we measure the overnight stays. Now, what is the number of nights that is spent in various establishments? Now, we will go every single hotel or place of accommodation. We will ask them, right, for the month of December, um, how many nights did you have? For every single night, how many people did you have staying over? How many nights did those people stay? The number of nights that was that people booked their accommodation. Okay. Then we also want to see the distribution of of tourism between the nine provinces. Then we want to see where is our preferred destinations. Now where are the people going? Which areas are the people visiting? And what activities are they taking? Are they participating in when they are there? All right, so we look at the volume, the value in the bed nights between the nine provinces. Né? How many tourists are going to each of the, the nine provinces? How much money is being spent by the tourists in each of these nine provinces? How many bed nights have people paid for in terms of accommodation in each of the nine provinces? And then very important also, we need to know what are the times of the year that people travel? Obviously, different kinds of tourism takes place in different times of the year, all right? Like, for example, if you go down to the coast, obviously your preferred season would be the December holiday, the summer holidays, because that's when it's nice and hot and the weather's nice and whatever people go to the coast to go on the beach and stuff. Yes, they want the nice climate, the nice weather. But if you go to the Kruger National Park, for example, the most popular time there would be in the winter because then the grass is all dead and it's easier for people to see the animals, etc., etc., okay? But obviously, tourism is seasonal. Um, it's, it's focused on specific activities that takes place during particular seasons. So we need to be able to see what are the popular seasons, when is the quiet times of the year, when is the busiest times of the year, ne? what are the times of the year that people travel to the different destinations. Okay, 
Now, none of these indicators that I mentioned now indicate how tourism actually affects things like national production and national income, okay? Because for national production, remember, we need the finished value of all goods and services produced in the country. And we just said that it's very difficult for us to quantify tourism in terms of a monetary amount. All right. So one of the difficulties that we face is that to, to be included in the national production into our GDP, the domestic production, the output that we produce in South Africa, our industries are classified according to the goods they produce. All right. Whereby tourism is a consumption-based concept. Obviously, lots of people buy stuff. We need to now know, okay, the buying of the stuff, was it done by a tourist or was it done by a local person? Okay, a domestic citizen, a person staying in Krugersdorp, or was the money spent by a foreigner in Krugersdorp or a tourist from Durban that came to Krugersdorp? Now, it's very difficult to determine how to allocate the spending because it's difficult for us to identify Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's easy, it's easier than other times, okay? But if, for example, you go to checkers to buy rolls and cold meat, they don't ask you if you're a tourist, must this amount be included for tourism, or are you local from the area and then it's just going to be part of the normal shopping? It's difficult. No, it's difficult, difficult, difficult to know the spending, what spending was done by tourists and what was done just by our local people. Okay, so tourism is defined by the characteristics of the consumer, the tourist, at the moment of consumption. All right, so when they visit their country, when they visit whatever destination, their consumption will include everything, like the accommodation that they're paying for, like the transport they are paying for. But as I said, they also buy non-touristy stuff. Yeah, they might buy go to Edgar's and buy a t-shirt or new sneakers because there is broke or whatever. And that is not generally seen as tourist expenditure. All right, because as I said, they're not going to ask you when you pay at the toll, are you a tourist or a local? All right, so there's certain kinds of spending that is obviously tourism, like their accommodation, like their plane tickets, like their car rental, whatever. Yeah, those things, it's easier to identify. But when they buy like retail stuff, you know, when they go to retailers and they buy stuff, when they go to a restaurant to eat there, it's very difficult to determine how much of the spending at that restaurant was done by tourists and how much was done by local people. All right. So it's very difficult for us to calculate exactly the amount of money that tourists actually spend in the country because of the, the challenges. You know? So certain things are easier than others, but there are certain challenges. Okay. Now, for any activity to be classified as tourism, to be included under our definition of tourism, it must have the following requirements, okay? There must be a purpose for the visit. Now, we looked at the previous lesson to the different forms of tourism, okay? Whether people are traveling for business reasons, for leisure, to visit family, for medical reasons, to attend a conference, to go attend an archaeological site, to have the cultural experience, whatever the reason, but there must be a purpose. Now, people don't just travel for no reason. There's a purpose to their travel. Then secondly, very, very important, it came out in the, the definition as well, no remuneration can be earned from within the place that you are visiting. All right. So if you are being paid, you are going to a hotel at a tourist destination, and that hotel is paying you to be there. It is not tourism. Okay, that means you are being employed by the hotel. You are working there. You are not earning an income. You, you can't earn an income from the place that you are visiting. Obviously, in terms of business tourism, okay, if you are a travel agent and your employer sends you to go and stay at a hotel, remember it's not the hotel that is paying you. Your employer is paying you to visit the hotel, to scout and see the quality of the service, etc., etc. If your employer is paying you, it's still tourism, but not the hotel. You cannot be employed by the hotel. Okay, the place that you are visiting, no organization there, no business there can, can pay you. Then it's not tourism. All right. And then I said when we went through the definition as well, to be classified as tourism, obviously the minimum length of stay must be one night. It cannot be classified as tourism 
if you just zip out for the day and you zip and you sleep in your own bed again tonight. Those are called same day visitors. It is not included under tourism. Okay, you must stay at least one night. And then, as I mentioned, the maximum length of stay must be less than one year. If your length of stay is longer than one year, you are no longer a tourist. You become a resident. Okay, you're not outside. If you stay in a place for one year, that becomes your usual place of residence. Now, you're no longer outside of your usual place of residence, and therefore, you cannot be seen as a tourist. Okay, so minimum on one night, maximum one year. Right, and then we say that tourism is when people travel outside of their normal destination. Okay, how far away should you be from your normal residential environment? There's your requirement. Near 160 kilometers away. So where you travel, near the place that you are traveling to and sleeping at least for one night, it has to be at least 160 kilometers away from your house. All right, if it's only 150, you are not touring, then you st you're still within your normal environment. Okay, only if you travel 160 k's or more away from your residential area and you stay at least for one night, then you'll be classified as a tourist.